We get to start on a new assignment today, assignment three. We'll find it in unit modules, and it's going to be unit seven. And what do we have here is our little animated button. We have some really basic triangular shapes, square shapes, and they are transforming themselves into different things, right? So we have a fish, we have an arrow, we have a horse, we have a cat. That is a very basic GIF animation transformation, and that's what this project is. In fact, all of these, no, actually not all of these. Some of these are just movement tests, but several of these actually transform, right? So we want to showcase a, a change of state from beginning, middle to end. You can see that in a few of these. Okay, anyway, the great thing about GIF animations is they're limited to 256 colors. That's the most they can have in no matter how many frames of animation. They have to use the same 256 pixel colors. That limits their memory wildly. They're very small files. So they are so small that online I can put like 100 frames and they'll play automatically. You don't need any special in-browser player for them like a flash animation. We're going to design our animation on nine frames. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then there's one other that I couldn't fit. With nine frames, we are going to storyboard out a transformation. So the transformation here is that the character starts this way, and at the end, they've added a hat, and their nose has grown, right? And that's important because if all they did was stick out their tongue, that wouldn't be a transformation. That would be a movement, right? But it can be a change of state, like the hat not being there and then the hat being there, or it can be a, a change of, well, a change of state of the thing itself, like the nose growing throughout. All we're delivering for this assignment is assignment three, and we get a, a little bit longer to do it. We get an extra day because it's complicated. This assignment has three components. The first we want to post today, and that's going to be our rough storyboard sketch. And we're going to limit it to being a square format, which works great for, for digital media. And we're going to limit it to being storyboarded in nine frames even though the animation itself might be many more frames than that. And then once we're done with the animation and happy with it, we are going to make nine frames again telling the story. And it helps us understand uh, like the format change between showing something as sequential images versus animating it and controlling the time. This is what's called time-based media. So the amount of time we look at each frame is something we control. More and more examples. Okay. All of these will showcase some sort of transformation, right? This isn't actually a transformation of the sun. The sun just moves and his eyes open. It's a transformation of the setting, right? goes from day to night, day to night. These are both good transformations. This one, not so much. I just think it's cute. Right. But this one, obviously, the whole thing kind of disintegrates. It transforms beginning, middle to end. This one, the hat appears. That's a change beginning, middle to end. This is a, an illustrator I like a lot. It's Evan, Evan M. Cohen, and uses kind of very simple printing techniques, very clear kind of graphic designs. This was his, you know, original nine frames. And if you animate those nine frames, this is what you get. So this is what's called an animatic. It's like a rough animation. And then this was his finished animation, right, which is many more frames. And then he does something I love at the end, which is not a requirement, but is really helpful, is that once you get to the last frame, you set it to reset at the beginning. So it loops like fluidly. So what does he do at the end? 
uh, you have the flower that the that the bird is turned into, and then the flower kind of turns into a sun, disintegrates, and then it resets to begin again. So setting to reset is a nice trick we can do. Sometimes the animation and the transformation, all you have to do is play it forward and then play it backwards, and it will reset itself and then endlessly loop. It just depends what you're doing. And then here are some examples from Laura Paulson, because it shows it doesn't need to be like hard edged and graphic. It can be painterly, it can be atmospheric, it can be whimsical. And here we have just changes of the environment, right? Beginning, middle to end, whether flowers are growing, whether light beams are coming in, whether butterflies are escaping from under the hat. Lots of ways you can approach this. So I'm gonna go through uh, we have a digital honors mentorship presentation that was done previously on this for another point of view. And this uses freeware. When we were in the pandemic, we couldn't use Photoshop. We had to use like all Photop, but then we had to, Photop doesn't have animation tools in it. So we had to use this site called giftmaker.me. Oh, no, not giftmaker, sorry, easy gif.com maker so if you want to be able to play with animations in the way that we're learning without owning photoshop this will show you how it's just an extra step where you have to export things to a to an outside program of course there's all my youtube videos and there's the past student examples that they've put into their final portfolios ones like this Subtle transformation that becomes pretty extreme. This is a very quick, quick, you know, frame rate, but very smooth. It works well, even just with nine frames. Just a clever use of the setting and the character. You are asked to use an asset as some part of your animation that you've already created for the class. So can you guys tell me what is the transformation in this one? Moon. It's the moon, yeah. The creature is just flying around. And that's fun and it takes a lot of work. But that's a movement test. The transformation is in the moon. The change of state from beginning, middle to end. I had the same blue zone. There you go. Yeah, that, that is the one, kind of the double-edged sword of Pixabay. There's such good references. Everyone can use them. That they're such good references that everyone uses, right? So you'll you'll see them over and over again. Unless we transform it enough that you can't even recognize that it's from Pixabay. And then some of these past. Oh, this is Josiah's from last semester. So Josiah uh, did, who's our digital honor student, did a panning shot, which actually took a lot of the time. Panning shots in a GIF animation are, are tricky to get smooth, but we can definitely do them. I've demonstrated them in the past, but then it takes up so much of the demonstration period. I don't think I'm going to do it this time. But you can see how it relates, right? The panning shot means that not only did it pan down his landscape, but it also zoomed in. And then he has a transformation in his creature. Because a panning shot isn't a transformation. This is the transformation. So we start with our sketch. Oh, this is a fun one from last semester too. They actually took their line art jumble, which was a card design as the asset they're using. And then they're showing the change of the transformation is revealing one side at a time. So just a very kind of clean, it changes state. All right, so to sketch, we have to first come up with an idea. To have an idea, we need to have an inspiration. At least I do. So I'm going to be inspired by Terry Gilliam's uh, hand-drawn and collaged animations that were done for Monty Python's Flying Circus series, a, a British comedy troupe. He was the only American. He went on to, to co-direct films like... Um, 
the quest for the Holy Grail, Monty Python, the quest for the Holy Grail. And then on his own, he's a director of Time Bandits and Baron von Munchausen and Five Monkeys, Twelve Monkeys, Brazil, just really, really out there films. And he'll always use some sort of animated, sometimes stop motion, sometimes flat like this in his work. So what's great about these is they're so quick and fast and you don't usually see examples of animation that are just done by one person, right? Especially with, within a week, which is what we're being asked to do. So you can steal and composite components from other people. You can create wholly new components for yourself, but you need to use one asset that you've already made. So I'm going to decide on that first. And the one, the, the assets I've already made that I'm going to use are going to be the same ones I use for my, my creature scape, my proving ground. So I'm going to use my background. Or you know what? I might use it from the other class. Let's see. So this was the improved setting. You know, my resubmitted assignment one. So I can use that. And then I can use, I'm going to use my creature. And so I have to feature a transformation somehow with this creature in this setting. And I have an idea of how I want to do that. Or I'll let you guys decide. Because this is already I've created in this class. But I can use a different background maybe. So let's see. My other class I made a fast food landscape background. I think this was my resubmission. I'll clean that up just a little bit. There we go. Make it nice and... Eh, I don't know if I like it that. But this could be my setting. What do you guys think? With this character... I'm going to do something silly and Terry Gilliam-ish. So actually, I think I might want to use this setting because it's contrasted more. It's more cartoony. Right? This is dark grays. This is really, really saturated, but almost pale pastels. You guys are very involved and animated. You're doing your own thing. So I'm going to decide I'm going to use the fast food setting. These are the things I need to know for my sketch. So I'm going to make duplicates of them to my desktop. The way I can do that is I go into my folder and on a Mac, I'm going to click on the thing I want to duplicate. I'm going to hold down Option and then drag it to the desktop. And you see how I'll get that plus sign? That means it will make a duplicate of that file onto the desktop because I'm going to put them into a new folder. And for my setting, just like for the creature scape, maybe I don't want the JPEG. Maybe I want the full PSD. So I'll duplicate that. Now, animation, it's a good time to learn this lesson if we haven't yet, is something that requires a lot of organization. Planning and organization. So I'm going to make a folder for assignment three. I'm going to put these assets in there. And then I'm going to sketch out a plan, right? For how am I going to use these assets, this setting, this character, to showcase a transformation ac across nine square panels. And I will go ahead and sketch that in Photoshop. So I have my tablet, but you can sketch it. using a, a sketchbook and pen and paper. I'm going to say new file. I'm going to make it 8 by 10 inches, just really standard, by 350 pixels per inch, even though it's just a sketch. This will be the first time we're making a sketch that we're not then building the project on top of the sketch. So this is just a guiding sketch. I'll do 350. Okay, now... I'm going to use my brush. I'm going to use a standard black on white. I'm going to set my brush settings to be under my general brushes, hard round pressure sensitive. I want the size to be about the size of a pencil eraser. If this is a piece of paper, 
and I'm going to take the hardness down to about 70.